How's everyone doing? Awake? It's Friday. Oh, so you guys talk to him. <laughs> I ask questions, no one says a word. You guys don't even blink. Um, okay, let's talk first in case you guys don't know exactly what this guy builds. I've been covering it since the beginning, so I maybe know it too well. Um, why don't you explain to them the about dubs. the Here One? Yeah. Um, so my name is Noah Kraft. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Doppler Labs. Uh, we create tech for the ears. Uh, the, fro the product we will uh, ship next month is called Here One, and we consider it the first computer for the ears. What does that mean? Um, we believe the next wave of computing is going to happen on the body. Everyone's been talking about wearables, but we're big believers that it's actually going to happen in the ears, not on the eyes or in the wrist, where a lot of other companies are focused. And the reason is we think the ears, not only from a cultural and social standpoint, are a more elegant place to put technology, right? We've been wearing headphones for decades. Uh, but also, audio is a subtler way for you to interact with a computer, right? Voice is a very human way to interact. Typing on a piece of glass is not. And we want to leverage voice and audio as a way to really kind of bridge the gap between the human computer interface. And so what we did is create this product here, one, that basically takes the notion of a headphone, it's a really good true wireless headphone, and builds on that with a lot of other functionality that should add not only more value to your day and how you use that product, but also allows you, the, the big difference is it allows you to interact with your world. So our steady state, as Jordan just tried, is when you put the product in, it actually sounds like you don't have anything in your ears. We've created a very natural zero. People talk about ambient computing, there's all this terminology, but the basic premise is you put the product in and you should essentially forget about it. What that does is it allows us to use a baseline that's really natural. And you can talk to people with it in your ears, but you can also shut out the world. You can turn the volume up and down, you can stream music, take phone calls, and really do a lot more than you would be able to with a normal headphone. Yeah, so I mean, there's two ways we can go with this. Yeah. Um, and you guys have talked a lot about it. There's, there's the kind of hearing health route. Yep. And there's a lot of people out there who feels like they're a little bit hard of hearing or has just trouble hearing a little bit. They can be honest. I do. Okay. And the, the issue is that it's like young people feel like, oh, no, there's nothing wrong. I can hear. Sure. It's all good. But the truth is there's a lot of us out there. Yeah. And I, I think for us, we think noise is pervasive, right? And so whether, quote, you have a hearing health issue or not, the idea of superhuman hearing, we think, really applies to everybody because there's no scenario where you can't make it more ideal. Right now, for example, I can hear the din of the lovely people who are all around us, you know, fraternizing, talking, right? And let's say you and I were trying to have a very intimate conversation and not one that's so public, or we're at a restaurant. With our product, what you can do is you can sit down, and for example, we have directional mics. So you can turn on the directional mics, you can turn on our, our restaurant mode. What's gonna happen is the entire background is gonna go shoo and go down, but your conversation's actually gonna be totally intact. And so that might not be the thing that you need every day, but there are certain environments where that's really beneficial. Or, for example, because we have this pass-through that you just tried, let's say you're listening to music in your open office, right? And what happens right now is if someone comes and tries to talk to you, you have to take whatever, your, whatever apparatus you have in your ears fully off to interact with someone. With our product, you're listening to music, someone comes by, you literally tap it once, pass-through goes to what we call bypass mode, and that just mimics the exact audio of your ears. So you have a totally normal conversation. Oh yeah, I, I forgot to print that. Tap again, you're right back in your music. The flight attendant comes up to you on a plane. Same thing. I want a ginger ale. You tap again. And we're trying to create these very fluid UIs that whether you have a hearing issue or you just want to have a more fluid auditory experience, we want to provide that to you. And again, use the headphone as kind of the baseline to do that. Well, and what I find so impressive about it is that this isn't, and you guys should know this too, this isn't passing it into the computer of, of my smartphone. This isn't going to some data server somewhere far away and crunching the numbers. This is all actually happening within your ear. Yeah, there's actually four ICs in each of your ears, three mics, and the product's you know, the size of a nickel. And that was not easy to achieve. And, and to your point, because it has to be zero latency, all the computation has to happen in the ear to create all this augmentation and transformation. So then that begs the question of like what's next, right? Because it can live tune my world. Um, I can listen to concerts in a different way. I can have a conversation in a different way. I can listen to my music in a different way. But when we're talking about AR, right, that's a, that's a whole nother layer of um, information, right? Totally. And so we people use AR, mixed reality. We call it layered listening. That's kind of our terminology. The, we built, so our, our goal for the future is what we call kind of smart listening. 
the idea that right now, even though the tech we've created is very magical to your ears, you have to still control it manually. And so you have to take out your phone and use our app interface or tap the buds. And for right now, we think we have a pretty elegant UI, but it can definitely get better. So our goal long term is, let's say every morning you walk into your office and you turn it on Spotify and you, because you have our tech, turn on office mode, which is a certain filter, and you turn on the directional mics because you know you're gonna have a conversation. Right now, you have to do that manually. We have created an entire machine learning backend that's actually, and I know that's such a buzzword, but the b basic premise is we're training the system to be smarter with your use and with the wisdom of the crowd. And so we're actually using a ton of heuristics to try and learn you and start proactively feeding you, first through what we call smart suggestions and then through proactively serving you filters. So if you go to JFK, we don't want you to have to take out your phone. We just want to serve you airplane mode. And so what will happen is we see you're at JFK and we'll say, hey, we see you're at JFK. Can we turn on the baby reduction filter and the jet noise reduction filter? And you're going to tap yes or say yes. And we want to create this very fluid, to your point, mixed reality. And the last point on this is the reason we call this product here is even though it's a double entendre on H-E-A-R, it's really about being present. And that's the big point. Like the future will be digitized, right? This is what we talk about a lot. There will be so much tech. There will be bionics. There will be things in our blood. And we think a lot about how do we make that that transference more elegant. And so we want you to be present and we want this to be a non-isolating, very social product that starts to bridge the gap of what it means to put tech on your bodies more and more. Well, and what I hear you saying is that you're kind of distancing yourself from the phone itself, right? Yep. In, in terms of the UI, knowing where you are, but you still need the phone to know where you are. Yes. So here's a question. Is there in the future some layer of like auditory signaling where I'm walking through the West Village or I'm on Broadway and you know I'm right next to a Uniqlo. Is there a way to do that and who builds that? Do yeah, you so build that? There, Does Google build be, that? So there's a lot of stuff. There's ultrasonic, right? You can actually send signals that the human ear can't hear. There's beacons. There's other ways to trigger. But for the near term, we're absolutely tethered to the phone. I think most tech is going to be. But there is a future. We're bumping up against physics, but once batteries get small enough CPUs, you could imagine a world where a lot more can enter your ear. Maybe you do have a GSM type thing where you can take phone calls and not carry your phone. We're not there yet, but we definitely think a lot about kind of what does that post-mobile future look like. And even so, the way we built this system is a cascading model. So we run certain things on the buds, certain things on the phone, and certain things on the cloud. So what does that mean? There should be a future very shortly where if we know you're going on a plane flight, we could actually serve the baby crying and the engine filters and store them just those two filters locally so you don't have to be tethered to the phone. But again, we're getting into a world where, to your point, the phone is just such a powerful device. It'd be naive not to leverage it. But the question is, when do you take that leap to distance yourself from it? And I think the other question becomes, we're very interested in the idea of what we call distributed on-body computing. Like, there's a world, again, in the very near future where you're lot, using a lot of computers on your body. There's a nice question to ask, how do you harvest all those cycles efficiently so that you actually utilize all the CPU you're carrying on you? And again, I don't think we're going to be the people to figure that out. We just want to be the ones that basically own the interface of the year. We think that's an, a, a powerful and important entry point. Yeah, I remember a meetup company once where you, they put batteries on your shoe, and as you walk, you could fill it up and then plug your phone into it, which I thought was really well, cool. Even think about the phone. It's a GSM, a screen, a battery. When they take phone call, you're still draining battery because your screen's on. Like, it, it's an incredible product, but it is inefficient. And so you can, why don't you have two weeks of phone GSM battery in your belt? Because we're all carrying our phones anyway, right? And right. so who knows what that future looks like. So I want to ask you a little bit about what your, uh, your ideal use case is for this. Because I, do you expect, from what you've explained, it sounds like the here one could be in your ears at all times, but it shouldn't because no. that would be painful. And socially awkward. So I'd say here five, right, if we're talking like hypothetically, maybe as a product that's in your ears all the time. So first, even before we get into the tech side of that, we don't want to be Google Glass. You know us well enough. We launched our last product at Coachella. We're like, the cultural side of this is as important to us as the tech side of this. And tech can be, there's a really thin line between differentiation and alienation, right? And if I'm like, hey, buy this thing and put it in your ears, all that's, that's a huge leap. This is a very episodic product. It's an incredible headphone. Like as a true wireless headphone, we will happily say we believe we're at as good if not better quality than any other true wireless on the market. That being said, that's not the consumer promise. There's gonna be a lot of good commodity true wireless headphones. People seem to really start liking the AirPods, some aesthetics aside, et cetera. But for us, there are really specific use cases where we found people actually starting to come to us and saying, again, these open office scenarios, these commuting scenarios. One of the most interesting ones is new moms. There's 16 million new moms out there who are, don't wear headphones as much because they need to hear their baby. 
we solve that problem. And so we're really interested in saying, hey, who are these cohorts of people where having access to the world around them? And again, with full fidelity. And I, we're talking about this until you try it. It really, we've spent most of our time making sure it sounds like it is the world. It is your ears. And that's a big deal because it allows you to have that. So to answer your question, we're actually in the kind of, we're beta testing right now. We know we have an awesome product, but we really want to find the users who find unique use in this and maybe even have a pair of wired headphones on the side that they use just to run around with. But this is when they go to a restaurant. And to your point, one of the biggest cohorts that has come to us is uh, APD, audio processing disorder, and hard of hearing. Because there is a huge gap in the market where if you don't need a hearing aid, but you just need a little help, or autism, PTSD, these are all auditory processing. We have white noise. We have the ability to manually control frequencies. If you have tinnitus, we can actually pull down certain frequencies, or you can manually. And so once you have signal processing in the ear, the, the spectrum and the tool set we can give you is pretty vast. You said something about ear AirPods. Yeah. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> we going there? Yeah, we're going to go there. Because <laughs> Apple is like the biggest consumer electronics company sure. in the world. And uh, they jumped into your pool. Yeah. And well, we knew that the, was going to happen. Yeah, and the products are different in plenty of ways. And I could listen to you talk about it. But in sure. reality, it's a threat. So, so what? So, where do you, what, what's the plan? So what I'd say is. One of the good things about being a smaller company, we're not that small now, we're about 75 people, is I don't need to sell tens of millions of units, right? And frankly, outside of Apple, there's been a lot of other people who've made claims in this space uh, that have fallen flat. And we've talked about this a lot. And we delayed our product. We were supposed to ship end of last year. And the reason was we knew we had hit a standard. We just wanted to be able to scale at a level where we could go big back box retail and make the promise of the consumer that every single here one you buy will have no connectivity issues. We'll have none of the Bluetooth stuff that has happened with other wireless products. Because if you're buying our product, especially just from the headphone functionality, it has to be on par with anything else. And if not better, if you're getting rid of wires, you can't have dropouts. And so we said, look, we're going to delay. We're going to make sure the product's perfect. And to your point, we think really the only competitor is AirPods. We're a more premium product at a more premium price point, And I think there's definitely room for both. That being said, if you just want to run around a pair of headphones, the AirPods, I think, are a good option. But if you want something that's truly sophisticated, a computer in your ears that gives you a lot more functionality, we, th we think we will set the standard, definitely. All right. What, what would you say um, is the greatest challenge? I mean, because educating the user on something like this is hard, and y there's nowhere to go test it. I'm lucky enough to have you know, used this product. I yeah. know what it's like. Um, but to, even to write about it is yeah, a challenge. Yeah, I, like, I remember the first time I was trying to write a headline for it. It has to be short, but it has to explain what it does. I right. have no idea what to do. How do you explain to someone, these people who have never used this product before, hey guys, what the hell they're spending tell you about like $300 on? Uh, you know what I mean? Like, no, it's, it's a really good question. So again, you know us well enough. So this is our third product. Our first product was uh, an earplug called the Dubs. Then we did it. Jordan covered the Dubs. So this is awesome to be sitting here, because you, know, you can imagine the first time we met, we had like seven employees and she's like, oh God, I'm going to go meet with this other entrepreneur. And it's, it's OG <laughs> over here. Exactly. Got to go out to Brooklyn. We started in New York. Anyway, the point being, it's not easy. And so in this, in this space, you have a very sophisticated group. Yeah, guys, you're sophisticated. Uh, sophisticated group of CES tech savvy individuals where I'm using a lot of highfalutin language. To the consumer, we are selling a true wireless headphone. That's a premium to the AirPods. Full stop. And if I can get you with that, and you heard the audio quality, like it is a killer headphone, that's a win. Because then I get in your ears. There's a good analog, and I'm not making any claims or anything like Apple in the sense of scale, et cetera, but like Steve Jobs had it right when he called the iPhone the iPhone. He could have launched a pocket computer, but everyone said, what's a pocket computer? He was smart enough to say, look, we're putting, we're, there's already phones in people's pockets. We're gonna leverage the phone to get in your pocket. We all know the iPhone is much more than a phone. And it's easy to forget, the first version didn't even have an app store. But it's become this indispensable thing that we all use. We follow that playbook and say, look, if we can get into your ears by saying, buy us as a headphone, we are a beautiful true wireless option, and then seduce you and allow you to learn all these different features, that's great. Now, that being said, if you're gonna come to our website, we're gonna give you all the information you need. If you wanna dig, we wanna provide you with everything. But again, we don't wanna over, I would never say to a consumer, this is an in-ear computer. These are smart, true wireless earbuds. Small, with real world sound control. Well, what's real world sound control? Come on the journey with us and learn a little more. And so uh, it's a great question because you do need to simplify things when you're going to the mass market. And I think we spend a lot of time making sure that we can, you, uh, one of our partners are, uh, 
the Tao Group. And uh, they invested in us early on. They're incredible dudes, and it's always funny being in Vegas. And one of the greatest quotes that they told me is they said, first get them in the door, then double the prices. Love it. It's an incredible business act. Like, that makes, you need to get people to adopt. You need to get into people's ears. And I believe that our tech is differentiated enough and special enough that if you buy us a headphone, you're going to turn to your friend and say, dude, this is so much more than a headphone. You have to check it out. I feel like you're in a little bit of a, a tougher spot, too, because, like, you can look at a couple different models right here. You can look at Google Glass, yep. and they gave the, the definitive, you know, picture of Google Glass is Scoble yep. in the shower. <laughs> yep. With a selfie of Google Glass, which was like, okay, well, no normal person wants to buy that product now. Oh, you, you just you ruined you, it, yeah. right? And then you have Snapchat Spectacles. They didn't give that to us. Yep. Reporters, tech journalists, anybody who's, uh, you know, a, a nerd or geek had to go buy that, okay? Mm -hmm. They never seeded us with review units. Um, and so those are two totally different marketing tactics, and I think we know who won. But, but if you remember, so to jump in, like, I got to be honest, I think we did the spectacles play first. Here Active Listening for us was a spectacles. Coachella. You're right. It was Coachella. It was a constrained. Spectacles is we're, we're a toy. Only 10 seconds. Put it on your eyes. Have fun. We did that a year ago with a constrained product saying use it to curate music. And, of course, they are on a much larger scale. But I totally get spectacles did it right. But then again, you have to think, Spectacles is, in a lot of ways, a toy. There's no sure. true technological feat there. Yeah, it's cool to put a camera in such a small space and sure. the Bluetooth. That's great. But you guys have a highly technical product. I mean, yes. this is new technology. Yep. So you, you have this catch-22 of, do I seed it with the people who will understand just how powerful this technology is, or do I seed it with the cool kids? So I think you do both. And I think, again, because you can take our product, open your phone, pair it immediately and just use it as a wireless headphone. The barrier to entry, or you can go through our three minute onboarding. I think for me, the better analogy, because you're using the eyes, is I think Beats did a great job, and I think more importantly, we look at Tesla a lot. Tesla is a car, but you perceive Tesla, because they've done a great job, as being much more than a car, because they have digital, right? And they have app updates. I think Tesla said, look, everyone knows Tesla's a car, but they know they're much more than a car. I hope we can do the same and say, look, everyone knows we're a headphone, but we're much more. That being said, there is nuance to this, and we're very aware of that, and, and I hope we have the self-awareness to, uh, you know, not jump the shark, and really, to your point, both explain how this is different, but also say, look, you can use this as a headphone. Okay, and I have time for one more. Yeah. So, I, I want honesty in this, because sure. this is one of those. And Jordan, if you were I would in never our, give you anything but. Sure. <laughs> if, if you were in our audience earlier, I did ask this question to Fitbit, so I'm sorry if you're hearing a repeat, but it's a good question, I think, and I don't want bullshit yeah so what is doppler's greatest strength as a company yeah and what is its greatest weakness and i won't count you know we try too hard or care too much no 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 no, no. uh those are really good uh the the first one's easy the strength is the team uh we've hand selected a group of 75 remarkable individuals uh i call myself literally the idiot savant like in the sense that like i show up and like say some stuff but there's a whole group of people who are making the tech we've made I can just tell you, we work with manufacturers that all the big boys, and they're like, you get, no one's doing this. And so I wake up every day very blessed to work with an incredible team. Um, weakness, there's so many. <laughs> no, it's the truth. Um, I think for us, we started in Brooklyn, and it's actually good on the brand stuff. I think sometimes we, we get a little ahead of ourselves as it relates to being cool. And I think we can be a little hipster, and we can be a little... Uh, a little uh, too niche in the market. And I think one of the things that I'm learning to do is say, look, uh, there are a lot of consumers out there who speak different languages and have different needs. And we're, I think what we're trying to do right now is really understand as a company, how do you scale in a way? Because we've been good at being niche, that actually speaks to a mass consumer. And I'd like to see us, and this is just being, you asked for raw honesty, like I'd like to see us over the next six to 12 months to really involve a, evolve an apparatus that is a mass market marketing engine. And we've done really good in the Coachellas, but to make that turn to say, hey, I need to sell something at a big box retailer to someone in Minneapolis who is gonna walk in and spend $300 on something, that's a leap. And I think we'll get there, but that's what we're working on right now. Noah, it really is a pleasure. We've been working Always. together for a long time. Three Glad years. to be on stage with you. Awesome to see you, Jordan. Thank you. Big round of applause for Noah, please. Cheers.